Hello, everybody. Back again, Pastor David G. Grogan, Sr., Senior Pastor at Sojourner Life Ministries, and I'm the voice of Phoenix's Javelin. I'm re really looking forward to doing this, this, uh, this next piece. But before I do, I ask that you um, uh, subscribe to my uh, videos. If you like what you see or hear, I ask that you subscribe to uh, Pastor David G. Grogan Sr. Ring the bell. Ding! When you ring the bell, you'll be notified when my videos come out. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you like what you hear, leave your comments. Leave your comments and I'll, I'll, um, if I can, I'll comment back. Um, uh, really, really been enjoying the comments. Uh, you know, this, like I said, this, this next, this next spot that I'm doing, this spot that I'm doing right now, rather, I'm really, uh, I was looking forward to doing this because, you know, there, I've been noticing that there's some things, y'all, that are not really catching on. I kind of watch my own videos and, you know, it, it could be the content is not what people want to hear or it just not, might not be what's really, um, 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 important to people, you know, uh, in the time that we're living in, some things tend to do, uh, a lot better than others, but that's all right because, but this, cause this particular spot right here, I like it because I like, um, uh, I like who is, who is speaking and talking about what I'm going to read here. So this is out of Fox news. Um, let me get my visual accumulators here. Uh, this is out of Fox news. And uh, this particular article is dated uh, um, March the, the 19th. Um, it's, it's published March. The opinion was published on March the 19th. I'm, I'm just kind of getting to it. Uh, Laura, Laura Ingram uh, uh, visited it and covered it. And um, I really like it, um, what, it's, what, it's, uh, what it's talking about. Because, you know, I did, the, I did the spot just a few days ago on um, uh, resegregation and that we can't allow this to happen. We can't allow resegregation. Uh, allow segregation rather to come back. You know, people want to resegregate this country for some reason. People are not satisfied with peace. They would rather have turmoil. They would rather have angst. They would rather have hatred and division take place in this country than have a country that's fitly fitted together, knitted together. No matter what the color of our skin is, some people on both sides, whether they're Caucasian, whether they're white or they're black, or Hispanic or Asian people just want to have mess. I've never understood why people want to have so much mess in their life. You know what? Uh, matter of fact, I was talking to my son, great friend of mine. Um, a drama, drama. People like drama. People, in, you know, in this country nowadays, it, it, sixty-one years old, and over the last probably probably five to ten years, I've seen an increase in the desire for people to want to have drama. People are not satisfied with peace. You know, Jesus Christ, he's called, he's known as the Prince of Peace. And I would think, or you would think that people would want to have peace in their life. But we are living in a time where people, they got to have drama. These um, reality TV shows with all these different families on there, you know, uh, drama, man. I mean, they're fighting, they're, they're you know, going, laying down with each other's sisters and and boyfriends and husbands, drama, even in real life, you know, people are, they just got to have drama. The social media has been complicit in, in drama They because that's where people go to have drama. They go on social media so they can spread drama. And I'll tell you something, y'all, we are living in a time where this thing has gotten so far out of control. It's even from the White House all the way down to the hood, y'all, drama. And it's day in and day out, and the very people that are professing that they want to that they want to fix things, they are some of the main ones that are causing the drama. And so, this particular article, I really like this because, as a 61 year old black man, born in Jackson, Mississippi, you know, uh, my father was born in, in Atlanta, Georgia, and I mean, you know, we uh, he was born, you know, way before the civil rights era after slavery, before the civil rights era, grew up in the civil rights era. So, you know, our parentage for people that are my age, they went through uh, a lot of the things that, that the people today can't even imagine going through. They can't even imagine going through, but yet they act like they've been through it and they got to fix it, but they can't. That they can't because they're, because they're going in the wrong direction to try to fix it. So Bob Woodson um, says uh, the civil rights movement was a... Uh, the, the civil rights movement I was a part of has been betrayed by a twisted progressive ideology. Absolutely. And, and, and Bob, you know, Bob, Bob Woodson, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, 
I, I don't know his exact age, but you can tell he's probably in his late 70s, early 80s. He's a black man. He says right here, the Reverend, Martin, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. envisioned a just and equitable America in which citizens treated each other as persons rather than as carriers of an indelible racial imprint. Today, the progressive left has been has 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 bet against King's vision. We are not persons; we are our racial identities, and anyone who rejects that view is is guilty of racism. And this, listen to me. So, if you reject that, you know we are we are a product of our racism. If you if you know of 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 our racial identities, then um um you know you're talked about. You're you're mocked. You're scorned. I, you know I'm I don't I'm a black man. I know who I am, but do you think that's going to, I'm going to use that to keep myself down? You think I'm, I'm going to allow people because they don't like the color of my skin to keep me down? I, I'm going to be mad at everybody that, that, that says that they don't like black people. I'm going to, that's going to keep me down. I was, and so, and so, and so, so, so what, what the drama filled society wants me to do, they want me to be a victim and they want me to, they want me to act like a victim and they want me to walk like a victim and talk like a victim. They want me to uh, 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 go to my job and on my job and be a victim on my job. Everything about the color of my skin says that I have to be a victim. That's what the, that's what society wants. They want black people to be victims, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. Everybody hates us. Everybody's got their their knee on our neck for the last four hundred years. That's what Al Sharpton said. You know, when he, when he when he should have been as a reverend, he should have been preaching deliverance through Christ Jesus. He's he's just a he's just another. Just another uh, race baiter out there should even have Reverend in front of his name because he don't know anything about peace, about deliverance, and he and he was and he and he came up during this time with men like Bob Woodson. But they have two totally different ideals about um, the civil rights era and what it was meant to do and what it did. So it goes on to say King himself would be called out and targeted for anti-bias uh, re-education if, if he were alive today because he just wasn't acting like, you know, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is the black man. Oh, we just can't get nothing that everybody's after. Is everybody, you know, that's not what he was about. He was about, he was about, he was about freedom and, and life and liberty for all races that we would not be judged by the, color of our skin but by the content of our character but the race baiters today they don't want that they don't want you to feel as though you can be judged by the content of your of your character they only want you to think that you just the only thing that people look at you for is the color of your skin that's yeah you we are our own worst enemy because we're black we're down because we're black we can't get nowhere because we're black everybody hates us because we're black people need to apologize for us for the things that they did 400 years ago because we're black Everything that everything that I try to do, you know, uh, 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 people need to get out of my way and let me do it. Even if I don't know what I'm doing, even, even, even if I don't deserve to have it, even if I haven't worked for it, I, I still should have it. I should still should get it. I should get grades in school. Even if I hadn't made the grade, I should still pass. It's ridiculous, y'all. It's ridiculous. I would rather work hard and earn my living and feed my family and know that I did it through the power of the living God than to say that, well, you owe it to me, give it to me, or I go take it from you. Because the reason I'm taking it from you is because you should have gave it to me in the first place. That breeds drama, dissension, hatred, and laziness, sloth. When we tell people that you don't have to do it because it's owed you anyway, so just the, the liberal party will tell you, just hang back. We're going to get you what you, have, what you deserve. Don't worry about it. So the civil rights movement of which I was proudly a part of has been betrayed by a twisted progressive ideology that hyper, hyper racializes our country. Absolutely. It divides our country into two groups. Uh, one uh, on the, on the one side, blacks and on the other on, and, and, uh, and blacks and other minorities who are permanent and powerless victims. And on the other side, irredeemable white uh, supremacists bent on their destruction instead of helping to create a society in which all have an equal opportunity to, to, to thrive, it insists that systematic racism prevents anyone except privileged whites from succeeding. And I hate that because that's a lie from the pit of hell. 
That's not the truth. I, I, I look, my, our middle daughter, she is a upper level executive for uh, an insurance company. And we have taught her and my son business insurance. We have taught him, our oldest daughter. You listen to me. Your color, the color of your skin can't stop you from doing anything. You stop yourself. If we've raised them from the time that we that they were under our our parentage, not to be told that they couldn't do anything. Work hard, get it yourself, get your own, get your own home, drive your own cars, you know, uh, save up money. You do what you can do because nothing could stop you from succeeding. But this new ideology tells us, oh, you can't do it. They ain't gonna let you do it. They're not gonna. They're gonna hold you down. If if, if you're black or, or, or you're or you're brown, the the, the, the white old oh, white supremacist is gonna hold you down. You don't, don't even try it. And they'd rather have you mad and angry at the very people that you live next door to, that you work with. They would rather have you angry and nasty and and have you looking at them like they owe you something. But I tell you something, you're gonna get tired of this drama. This drama, y'all, is gonna catch up with you. I guarantee it. I guarantee you. That this drama, this stuff that's, that these race baiters are putting out there, it's going to catch up with you. And you're going to regret all the waste of the time that you spent believing these people. You're going to regret it. Let me go on. So uh, this sea of helpless victims must depend on whites cleansing themselves of racism or more uh, or, uh, on uh, racism, on more government uh, programs or on both. The left has today weaponized race, not for the purpose of healing wounds, but of gaining power. And I like this guy. I like this old man. This, this, this is a, see, this is the kind, this is the kind of, this is the kind of elder I would sit down and talk with. This is the kind of man that I would sit down and break bread with because this man knows what he's talking about. This is a spiritual warfare, y'all. This is a thing that the devil knows exactly what he's doing. He's pitting humanity against itself. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand it will not stand so the uh so uh we see we see the same pattern of weaponizing race emerging throughout our elite institutions from hollywood to major corporations and government agencies unfounded and often life-altering alle um, al allegations of racism from the from the from the reality uh excuse me from the relatively privileged from that, from the relatively privileged, get more attention than the myriad of challenges facing low-income and working-class Americans of every race. But, but nowhere is this widespread per, per, um, perversion of civil rights movement more obvious than on college campuses. Most recently, at Smith College and University, and and I'll tell you something: they're teaching it. They're teaching it. It, 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 I like the way the term, they're weaponizing racism. They're teaching people how to use race as a weapon to destroy other people. To they're, 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 They want the black people to destroy the whites, have the whites downtrodden, um, feel like they owe black people everything. Uh, uh, the, the, they want the whites, they, they, they call them white supremacists and right Christian supremacists. They even use them, they're even using Christianity in these colleges as a weapon against black people. It, blasphemy. And they're going to give an account for you. Listen to me. <laughs> Look at me. They're going to give an account. When you start taking the body of Christ, and when you start taking the word of God, and you start saying that it's white supremacist gospel, when you start doing things like that and saying that the, the gospel is, is, is only come to, de to demoralize black people and the whole black people down, you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit and that the word of God says you cannot be forgiven of. You'll die and go to hell for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You professors, you theologians out there that are theologians that don't have the Holy Spirit abiding in you, that are telling these lies, you are racist, you're, 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 you're hateful. You're going to give an account to God, y'all. You're going to give an account to God. Because God, ain't, he's not going to stand for, for his name to be drugged through the mud. When the only thing that he wants for his humanity is to be in fellowship with them. He wants them to have peace. He, has, he wants them to have the, the, the fairest of the land. Is what God wants for his creation. But you know what? Because these people choose in their hearts to be wicked and evil and racist. Hypocrites. Liars and deceivers. They are, they do as their father Satan does. Satan is the father 
of lies and the Lord of the flies. And these people that are teaching this stuff, that's exactly who their father is, Satan. And if they think they're going to go down there and have a party with him if they, when they die and go to hell, ain't going to be no such thing. Weeping and wailing and moaning and gnashing of teeth for an eternity. And if you want to be down there with them, you keep on following them. You keep on believing their hype. You keep on drinking their Kool-Aid. You keep on doing racist. Black people can't be a racist. Black people have become more racist than white people now. You act racist. You got racist, racism in your heart. You're mean. And you're, you act like somebody owes you something. You don't want to work anymore. You don't want to raise your children to do right anymore. You're mean and you're nasty and you're blaming it. You're blaming your, your trifling ways. You're blaming your, 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 your heathenistic ways on white people. You choose how you're going to live. You choose what you're going to do. And when you choose to live your life like Satan, you're going to get a Satan's reward. You sure are. So in 2018, a young black student at the elite all-women's college was approached by a white janitor and a white campus security officer who asked why she was eating by herself in a dormitory that had been closed uh, that had been closed to students for the summer. The student, in her own words, in her own words, had a meltdown. That's what she had. She said she had a meltdown, which she chose to share on social media, convinced that she had been targeted for removal because she was black and that her life was in danger. She was feared that her life was in danger. Smith College acted swiftly, apologizing to the student, initiating legal me mediation with her, uh, putting uh, the janitor and administ ad administrative uh, on, on administrative leave and in instituting sweep sweeping anti-racist training for the staff. It goes on to say, it, it turned out, however, however, that the student had completely misin misinterpreted the interaction. No students of any race were, were permitted in that area, which was reserved for a children's camp and thus close and thus closely monitored for uh, unauthorized personnel. An independent outside investigation found that neither the, the custodian nor the security officer acted out of race, out of racial bias. Or treated her unfairly. Both employees had followed college um, policy to the letter, and the and the screw and the security officer had not been armed. He wasn't even armed, but she was. She felt dangerous because she's a black. That's what that's 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 what we're made to think now. Everybody's against you if you're black, and a, and, a, and a white man, a white woman comes to you. They're 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 coming to destroy you. They're coming to kill you. They're coming to get you. They're coming to they're coming to make you cow down to them because you just whoa, you just a poor old black person. You ain't got no power. Unfortunately, by the time the facts came out, the damage was done. Uh, several service workers, many of whom had worked at the uh, college for, for decades, had been publicly branded as racist, and the entire staff had been forced to participate in anti-bias training that, de demanded the, uh, de de that demanded the workers answer psychologically invasive, you know, invasive questions about their childhoods and other personal experiences. Ultimately, the college's anti-racist programs became so emotionally distra uh, distressing that one of them um, that one of them resigned in frustration. Um, in, in many in many towns across America, getting a service job at a local college can be an, an answer to an answer to a prayer. Uh, where factors where factories and other uh, employees have left, universities remain a place where someone without an elite education can get. A reliable job with full time hours and benefits. When I sent my when I sent my own children to college, I admonished them to greet the people who prepared their meals and cleaned their buildings to learn their names and get to know them. I taught them that attending college uh, that attending college placed them in an extremely uh, privileged position and that they must always remember to uh, treat all those who serve them with respect and appreciation. And like and like nearly um, all parents in my in my generation, I try to teach my children to give others the benefit of a doubt. Goes on to say, uh, my fellow my, my fellow civil rights uh, veteran uh, Barbara Jordan once said, "quote Every single individual in this in this country is entitled to just as much respect, just as much dignity as every other individual." Unquote. In the in the sixties, I marched and got. Uh, arrested fighting for this idea. I organized for equality and coordinated 
community development programs for a number of local and national organizations, including the NAACP. I did not fight so that students of any race at, at an elite college would be able to uh, to wild the uh, to excuse me to wield the full force of the administration to punish and shame blue collar workers over a over a mis uh, over a misunderstanding. Uh, that's why I rep that's why I represent a group of scholar a group of scholars who together from the uh, form the 1776 Unites Initiative, and are standing up to uh, to uh, to the radical left and stand up to the radical left. Uh, there you go. And it's it's twisted narrative of um, race. We dissent from contemporary um, groupthink and rhetoric about race, class, and American history that defames our national heritage. Uh, di divides our people along racial lines, uh, instills weaponized uh, helplessness in minorities, and smothers the rights of white Americans to fair and equal treatment. Civil rights icon and representative John Lewis elo eloquently elo uh, eloquently captured uh, this statement when he when he stated, "Freedom is the is a continuous action." We all must take, and each generation must do its part to create an even more fair and more, even more fair, more just society. The civil rights movement was about giving everyone an opportunity to succeed and tr and treating everyone fair, regardless of race, religion, and creed. We must oppose racism wherever it is found, and we must support the oppressed to uh, 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 support the oppressed, no matter. Who is doing? Who is doing it? Or uh, who the victims are? We must also remember that privilege is not as simple as skin color, but far more complex. Those uh, those are the lessons of the institution like um, like Smith should be passing on to the next generation. Beautifully, beautifully said. Great article. And you know, like I said, I don't know you know how much viewership this this particular video is going to get, but I like it because the one thing I am not going to allow. Uh, black um, organizations like Black Lives Matter. I'm not going to allow any organization and some of these um, old time um, people that have come up through civil rights that still have it in their hearts. They're they they are unforgiving. They cannot forgive the the people that happened. Things happened that were terrible in the past. No doubt about it. That goes without saying. But the ability to be delivered from that and to move on from that especially when other people want to move on. So you could make people um, dislike you, not want to be around you just because you continue to be unforgiving. When the easiest thing for you to do to be able to come into unity with the people around you is to forgive and to move on, you know, to, to decide that you're not going to allow this stuff to keep you held down, to keep you in drama, as I was talking about at the beginning of this video, drama. People want to stay in drama. Well, I don't want to be in drama. Listen to me. I'm going to close now. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, your tomorrow is not promised to you. Receive Christ as your Lord and Savior today. The Word of God says in Romans the 10th chapter, verse 9 and verse 10, that if you profess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on your cross, died on the cross for your sins, that you could be uh, saved because you make the profession with your mouth and you believe with your heart unto righteousness. And then it goes on to say in verse number 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You shall be saved. If you believe it, God knows your sincerity. If you believe it, you shall be saved. If you have sin in your life, unrepentant sin, the word of God says in 1 John 1 and 9, that if you confess your sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You can be stored into the righteousness of God where you can be in communication with him and you can pray and you can receive the love that he has for you. Listen to me, y'all. Do not allow the drama of this society. Do not allow these racism and these evil people, y'all. There are some wickedly evil people out there. And the only thing they want to do is they want to keep strife stirred up because it keep, like you hear me say all the time, it, it keeps them relevant. And it, they act like if, they, if they're not relevant in this particular way, that they'll die out and nobody will, the people will forget they're not around. The people will forget they're, uh, they're around. And that's not, not going to happen. That's not going to happen. If they have loved ones, friends, you know, that will know that they're around. You don't have to do this kind of stuff. You don't have to cause so much dissension just to be relevant. You don't have to do that. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
with all your heart. Love the Lord God with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all of your might. And then love your neighbor as yourself. All right? God bless you until we come back together in the next video. Love you. Farewell, y'all.